Uh, so my name is Ryan Brophy. I'm Rachel Brooks. Ow. I'm Kyle McCauley. I'm Erin Hills. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and together we make up the William Mary Elections Commission. Uh, so on behalf of everyone, on behalf of the Elections Commission, we'd like to thank everyone for being in attendance tonight, especially the candidates who have worked hard to prepare a good debate for you today, and hopefully that's what we'll have. Um, so quick thing about tonight's format. There are going to be two questions from the moderators up front, just me and Erin. After that, the questions that you guys submitted will be run up into the audience, and if you submit a question and have your name on it, you will be asking that question. So we'll hand you an index card and a microphone, and that question will be asked. So do be prepared to be on your feet, because uh, we could call on you at any time. Um, the candidates will get 60 seconds to respond to your question, and then 30 seconds for a rebuttal, if we deem necessary. And then we are going to choose the topics so that we get a wide variety and range of, of uh, issues to talk about, but throughout, we're going to have an emphasis on um, specifics and on comparisons between the candidates. So hopefully everyone gets a good idea of what each candidate stands for so you can be a more informed voter um, come Thursday at 8 a.m. when the uh, election day begins. So thank you very much, and we're gonna start to introduce the candidates. First, we have Colin Stanley.
Additionally, outside of Bill and Mary, I led the Boy Scouts of America's National Youth Leadership Training Academy, the only campus of its kind, where every summer, kids come from around Europe, Puerto Rico, and the United States get training in how to lead themselves and lead others. All these opportunities have given me a great chance to meet students, to understand diverse interests, and be able to represent them well. And I hope in the entirety of my presidency, I will continue to collect information, keep asking questions, and asking what students need from the student assembly in order to produce the correct results. and the only common thing we really have is student assembly experience. And that's what makes us really special. We get to take all of our programs and we get to scale them by including the whole campus, not just certain segments of it. And what makes us unique and why our partnership is so great, and I look forward to our administration, is that when we talk about an issue, we actually listen to everyone on campus. And we get, uh, uh, we get support and ideas from every part of campus instead of just a couple. So that's why I think our partnership is so unique and why we're the best candidates. Thank you very much. As promised, we're now going to move on to the audience questions. The first one comes from a Drew Wilkie. <laughs> so, my question looks at the budgeting process. Uh, with more student organizations applying for funding every year, and the student activities fee that's already the highest in Virginia compared to any other uh, undergraduate institution, how would each of you as SA president uh, remedy this grave challenge? Trevor, we're going to start with you. Liz and I, when it comes to the budget process, are going to always prioritize productively and be fiscally responsible. What we mean by this is we're going to look at the programs that affect the greatest amount of the student body and make sure we put the funding in those areas. When it comes to issues like health, whether it be sexual, physical, or mental, we believe that we want to make sure funding is equitably distributed across the entire student body. Every student benefits from free flu shots or from STI subsidies or from mental health visits. And we want to make sure that we put funding in areas where every student can benefit equally. That's why we're going to make sure we prioritize programs where the programs that affect the largest amount of the student body are, what are at the forefront of our agenda. Um, as this past year, I've served as the chairman of finance and budget in the Senate, and so I have a real intimate knowledge of the budgetary process. Right now, the student activity is at 98, and hopefully with the amendments passed, it'll also be $98 next year. And I think in our administration, we would also like to keep that at 98 or $99. And, but we also have to be clear. As Kendall's job this past year as Secretary Outreach, she has had over 50 other student orgs apply to have funding. So as more student organizations really realize the benefits that Student Assembly has to offer, it's helpful to understand that we might have to increase the budget if we need to, because I really believe that the budget and uh, the Student Assembly, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> the Student Activities Fee is great because it allows students to have services in different events all around campus. So I think the best thing for us to do is not necessarily say we're gonna keep it one way or another, but be open to all different possibilities, whatever may happen. Echoing all of that, I want to take a look at the clubs and activities here that oftentimes have a massive surplus. And there are a bunch of small clubs here that aren't represented enough and oftentimes die out because they can't get the funding that they deserve. These clubs are founded because these students are passionate about a cause and they can reach out to a small group of people. And I'd like to take, if possible, with the permission of each of these clubs and activities, part of their surplus and help funnel it into those smaller clubs and organizations so that way they can continue to grow and become forefront on this campus as well. Thank you. Our next question is gonna come from Kathy Liberbier. Hi. <laughs> What are your thoughts on folding or expanding the undergraduate council? Uh, we're gonna start with you, Colin. Um, over my time in the student assembly, I've actually helped uh, reform the under, undergrad, undergraduate council. And I was really in favor of the newest reform where we con consolidated the two VP positions into one. And as I look forward to the future, uh, look forward into the future of the undergrad council, I'd like to really specify it under three issues fundraising, advocacy, and uh, ceremonial. So I think right now the undergraduate council is a misuse of, of, of student potential. And I would really like to use that. And we understand that things take time. 
And so what I think, again, why our partnership is so great is that while I think in 10 years the undergrad council will be great for fundraising, advocacy, and ceremonial duties, in that time we don't want them to have to do nothing. So Kendall wants to work with them to do programming around campus, whether that be with body image, different stuff, but we really want to help and move the undergraduate council forward with its report. As someone who served on the undergraduate council for the past three years, I've watched it rise and I've watched it fall. I've seen its good days and its bad days, and I can definitely say from, from first-hand experience, what they need is definitely to start programming and getting their name out on this campus. I worked hard to make sure that undergraduate didn't get expired or eliminated last year because it is an essential part of the student government. It's an essential part of William & Mary. It provides students the chance to voice their opinions and represent their class in a creative manner that teaches business ethics as well. So I want to work with them to program with organizations like AMP and RHA to get their name out there and eventually grow and become a formidable body of the Student Assembly. The Undergraduate Council is currently at a crossroads, and I believe it needs to be expanded. The Undergraduate Council is made up of class officers elected by their class and entrusted to represent their class. Yet the Senators and the Senate over the past couple of years have stripped much of the responsibility from the Undergraduate Council. I want to help bring back the balance between the Undergraduate Council, the Senate, and the Executive Branch by making sure the Undergraduate Council is not just a, it's not just a club. Right now, the Undergraduate Council has to go and apply for funding to the Senate. The Senate controls all bills. I want to be able to bring this balance back between the three branches of government so that the class understands that the representatives they elect are actually representing them. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not very experienced with town gown relations, but I'm going to talk about, I'm going to shift that focus a tad bit and talk about relating William & Mary to Williamsburg community at large. I think if we just reach out to other organizations, like definitely Colonial Williamsburg restaurants and get them involved with the meal plan, and get other organizations to come and speak to the students and showcase what they have to offer, we can increase the relationships between the town and William & Mary and make it so that there isn't this type of disconnect from the town of William Ray. We're not just a college in a town. We're a town with a college, pretty much. Thank you. We have big ideas for relations with Williamsburg. First, there will be hearings coming up this summer and the next couple months regarding noise violations and the future of them. We'd like to attend these hearings and become an advocate for an 8,000 uh, person strong population of Williamsburg and attempt to move noise violations something we have to attend court, just a simple fine. Additionally, the three person rule and the fourth person exception still prevent students from living off campus. We want to work on making it a student exception, so as many students as you have on a lease is still okay to live properly in Williamsburg. And also, there are a lot of opportunities in Williamsburg for internships in the city government. They're just not well publicized. This gives not only students valuable experience in city government, but also gives us valuable allies in the city of Williamsburg. And we will work to promote all these opportunities. And finally, our idea to prompt start acts as a portal between the, the students here and our bright, innovative ideas and our human resource to help build a creative economy in Williamsburg where students can bring their bright ideas to investors in Williamsburg and we would look to continue to expand that branch. Over my time here, town gown relations have improved tribal. And I, what I want to do is continue with those improvements. So one way by doing that is by having a meeting of the minds between the SA leadership and the city council leadership as we have done in the past. I think this is an integral part and give those meetings a little bit more structure. And the way we do that is by having real issues to talk about instead of people just talking over each other. I think these meetings can be a, a really great resource for student leaders and for city leaders to talk about issues that, that face them. Um, so that's how I hope. Chris 
So, can you clarify how uh, you plan to empower multiculturalism on campus? Uh, diversity kind of seems like an easy word to throw around throughout your campaign, um, and I'd just like to hear uh, the tangible goals that you have to promote diversity on campus. We want to create a safe and open place for students who can foster diversity and share education about their cultures with other students, but also have their own corner where they feel comfortable on campus. One thing we want to do is establish the President's Task Force on Diversity, which would be a gathering of the heads of all different cultural organizations here on campus. The idea was these people would come together and bring actual tangible ideas that they would then recommend to us, and we would work with them to bring these policies forward into the student assembly. Hopefully, through this manner, we can bring forward all the different groups to have their own corner of campus where they feel safe, but also to collaborate and educate other culture groups about their culture. I think diverse communities start with its government, and I would hope that the student assembly under my administration would be diverse in its makeup. So we would want to make sure that we have our applications for both our secretaries and undersecretaries open to the whole campus, and we, then we would reach out to these multicultural organizations and encourage them to apply. Because those, are, those people in the administration are the agents for change on our campus. And so we would hope that those people would do that, and then our undersecretaries and secretaries would also be required to attend one cultural event uh, a month in order to make sure the student assembly presence is known throughout the campus. All right, the next question is from... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. No problem. All right, so as a diversity student on this campus, I can honestly say the voice is underrepresented across the campus. So what I want to do as my first active president is create a council of the multicultural leaders and talk with each one of them and possibly throw a joint program with all of them to the entire campus. So that way they can reach out and get their voice heard and get and get and draw attention to their cause. I also want to continue to bring speakers such as Maya Angelou and the Dalai Lama to the college because they bring a different perspective on life and everything else. I personally would like to get the Reverend Al Sharpton to come here too and speak for a bit. Um, I also want to create a forum where students of diversity descent can come and speak and share their experiences growing up in this world and how it's different than most students. Now our next question will come from Brian Lee. It's hard, most people don't know what the essay does. I mean, you hear that very often, and with our position, it's what we hope to do is encourage the transparency and also really reach out to students. And so for me, when I look forward and I look into our administration, what I would hope to change, um, I think the best way to do this is by actually going out and continuing a lot of the efforts that Kendall has done in this past year as the, executive, as the Secretary for Outreach. She has done such a great job reaching out to student organizations and folding them into our, uh, into the student assembly. And I hope to encourage this and, and continue this with our leadership summit idea. The leadership summit is a pretty simple idea. It's the meeting of the minds of all the leaders of campus. So right now that doesn't happen. No time on this campus are the leaders from the athletic community, the grad schools, diversity communities, the community service organizations, the SA, AMP, HOPE, all in the same room. So we would hope to do that and really encourage collaboration on all fronts in the student assembly. and the publicizing of the counseling center and what services they have to offer. So a major tenet of my platform is mental health, and so oftentimes students who withdraw from college for mental health reasons aren't allowed to come back. And this is true in colleges across the nation. So what we want to do is create a flagship program where they can, after they've attended therapy in their hometowns, they can come back to school for a period, and they go through therapy for about a month or two there, and they're cleared for the rest of their time here, because if they want to be here, who are we to tell them no?
There's a budget tracker online on the new website, but it doesn't actually show you where the money is being spent. It just shows you that it's being spent. We want to make sure that we increase transparency across the board. That way students know where the money is going to, what services the student assembly is providing, and what students can do to continue to use these services. Transparency is the biggest issue facing the student assembly right now, and we'll continue to fix this moving forward by making sure students have information at their fingertips. So yeah, guys, we got about half the questions, and they're going about twice as fast. So feel free to <laughs> grab a pen, write down a question, bring it up to us, and we'd be more happy to read it. As long, as long as you put your name on it, um, really anything goes, people. Thank you. <laughs> Intermission, yes. Great. Um, our next question. So how are you guys doing? I mean, I know the weather's bad, but how are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? Right. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're ready for our next question. And it comes from Peter Lipson. And we'll be starting with Carl. Question. Will you apply the flat hat reporting helicopter? I'm sorry? Will they apply the flat hat helicopter? What experience and accomplishments make you qualified to student body president? All right, uh, fantastic question. In my time at the college, I have served as the class vice president of advocacy for 2015 for the past three years. I am now currently the residence hall association president starting next year, and I serve as the administrative advocacy chair as this year for the um, residence hall association. I am also on the RA, RHA state board as the assistant director for finances and administration. These leadership positions and more have given me a leadership style that's both effective, fun, and able to get work done. Uh, thank you for your time. As the new fraternity council president, I hope to pass a resolution that increases self-governance and chaperism and makes them all have a standing uh, standing sport. I hope to increase philanthropy by holding the first IFC philanthropy, which raised money to make a wish and send Dean Gilbert for cutting down a large building. I hope to town down relations by holding a trick or treat event where local kids came to visit the fraternity houses, get candy, and play games. As Delta Phi president, I rewrote the pledging guide to make sure no new members uh, feel that they cannot join or feel like they should not uh, be able to join. As secretary of college policy, I made a presentation that outlined all the resources available to students when they go through a conduct process. And I read the handbook the first day I got the job and took copious notes to see where policy needed to align with student interests. And finally, I led one of the largest organizations, youth organizations in the world, the Boy Scouts of America's National Camp Now last summer after four years of serving on its staff. And it gave me a great experience to meet people from all across the United States. Uh, I've been with the Sioux Assembly the last two years as a class of 2015 senator, and I've held three chairmanships, policy, outreach, and finance. And I've done a variety of things, but my big ticket items that I think I've done was allowed me the experience for this role, is I helped write a bill to bring the Dalai Lama to campus. Um, if you guys don't know, the Student Leadership Development Office has bands that you can rent out for your student groups. Uh, this past semester, they only had two, and I helped buy them a third. And finally, know your rights card. So if any of you opened your campus uh, CSU uh, mailbox recently, you probably would have got a little note card in there that said, uh, you know, all your student conduct rights and student honor council rights. Um, this was an old initiative that I actually brought back. I helped write the language on both sides and orchestrate the whole thing. When I'm on the student assembly, I'm also an orientation area director, and that's my second year doing that. And I'm also a senior admissions interviewer this summer. And all of these different leadership experiences really kind of culminate in this position, in my opinion. It has allowed me to reach different parts of student campus and students at different parts of their experience. While as a mission senior, I talk to students at the beginning, orientation, when they first get here, and student assembly as their time here as well. Thank you. This next question is from a Rory Park. <laughs> and we'll start with Colin. Lighten the mood a little bit. 
If you and your running mate were in the Hunger Games, what district would you be and why? <laughs> Please limit your responses to 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, I would definitely be in District 13. For those of you who haven't actually read, uh, uh, haven't read the next two books, I'm trying not to spoil it. Uh, but uh, I would definitely be in there because I think sometimes uh, it's not necessarily the most loudest or the most visible, but it's the ones who have been working the hardest. So. <laughs> Can't say I read that book. <laughs> but it's unfortunate. So, if you don't mind, do you mind if I transfer this question to Harry Potter? Yes. All right. Bill Frank. All right, so the house that me and my room going to be in is Gryffindor. G House. What's up? We are both loyal, kind, and brave, and we know how to fight for what's right. We also look pretty good at holding a sword. <laughs> I believe I would be a Stark uh, because y'all seem to be very noble, have the best intentions, and I think it's about time something good happened to one of them. Excuse me. Um, they have questions back there. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Yeah, Drew. Just to be this back, this question is a little bit more serious. And it will be given to us by Noella Hansley. And Carlton, you will start. Okay. So my question is, after the publication of the SIGKAI email, many people have expressed concerns that William & Mary is a reactionary rather than preventionary campus, especially in relation to women's issues. What plans do you have to address these issues? All right. Um, well, we've been working, so we've decided We'd like to start a firm program with heavy sanctions on fraternity chapters that don't follow the program. That way they know that we are on a campus where respecting everyone is top priority. Shattering or shouldering someone's needs to second place or second class citizens isn't appropriate ever, especially on this campus. So we would want sanctions such as losing their house. That way they have the feeling that they need to know to go to these things and actually learn. stand up and say she didn't feel safe on campus. And I find that absolutely unacceptable. We all call this place home. We should all feel safe on the entirety of campus. And something I helped do as Delta Phi president was push the resolution from the Interfraternity Council that said every chapter must be trained once a year by a group like someone you know through my chapter. I believe the problem here is education. And this serves to be both reactionary and solving the problem ahead of time. So if we can make sure that every group that receives funding from students Low. that to ask to get trained once a year, we can make sure that a large portion of the population training in sexual education outside of simply the 30 minutes during extended orientation that one time freshman year. Additionally, there was a report put out by the school, a survey, where students were asked who they go to in times of trouble after sexual assault. After peers, the second most came faculty, yet faculty received no formal training at all in how to handle these issues. We want to make sure that faculty and staff also get training so they can point students in the right direction and the right resources. <laughs> civil discourse seminars, and Kendall has really been working hard on this. We've actually already met with Drew Stelch as an OCE, and he's agreed to give us a grad student if we are elected to go out and train students about how to have conversations in a good manner. Uh, has anyone ever heard about deliberative democracy? Yeah. 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 So we want to bring deliber deliberative democracy to the people by training people in how to have civil discourse and then spreading that throughout all of campus. Um, finally, well, I also attended the town hall, and I did notice that people did say they were feeling safe. So I went and met with Sarah Menifee and other people in Hope to actually start making, uh, mark, start making strides and renaming the rape trails and actually putting out signs out there so that uh, people can actually start changing the culture and the names on campus. This next question comes from our current essay president. Trevor, we'll be starting with you. <laughs> Sorry to whoever chases. Uh, President, it's a very time consuming position. From the time you step in the job um, all the way up until the end of the time you graduate. Um, 
so if you could talk to the audience a little bit about your time commitments for next year and why you'll be able to balance those appropriately and get the job done. And Trevor, we'll start with you. Uh, well, I love the school very much. Uh, it's given me all kinds of resources and opportunities to really help me grow into a well-rounded individual. And uh, my entire time here, I've always thrown myself into whatever job I've had and given all my, all my energy to it. And next year, my only standing commitment will be Delta Phi president, but I would even be willing to step away from that in order to be president of the school. I believe if I'm elected, I have a job to represent every individual here on campus, and that's over 8,000. That's a tough job. That's a lot of people to speak to. That's a lot of people to represent. And I'd be willing to give it my full time commitment. next year, our orientation area director, which actually ends at com opening convocation in the fall, and a senior admissions interviewer, which is only a three-hour uh, three a week commitment that is also paid, so it's actually a job. Um, other than that, this is what I want to do next year. This is my commitment. Um, and I think it is important that the student assembly president knows how much time and how much energy really goes into doing this job well. Um, I don't have any other commitments next year except for this. This is what I want to do with my life, and this is what I want to do for um, student assembly. so much on this campus and for this campus because I like to put all my effort into making sure this campus is as amazing as I want it to be and as everyone else thinks it can be. Our next question will come from Tracy Frederick. And Colin will be starting with you. Hi everyone. Um, as some of you may not know or may know, the student assembly received their first full-time advisor this year, and that is me. And so my question is, so my question is, how do you plan to continue to develop that relationship between the student assembly and the administration? Um, so as my time as senator for the last two years and working with orientation, I have a great relationship with the administration. Whether it's the Dean of Students Office, the Student Leadership Development Office, the First Year Experience Office, or Development or OCE, I've really worked over the last couple of years to uh, have build those foundations of relationships and actually uh, be able to capitalize on those in the times to come. When I, if I become student assembly president, I'll be able to hit the ground running, working with administrators in a collegiate manner instead of a you versus us manner. And if you actually get to know them and actually get to meet them, they're actually they're people too who want to make William Mary a better place. It's about working within those boundaries and realizing what we can do together. And what we want to do is actually extend the coffee talks program to student assembly president and vice president. So we'd actually meet with students um, from a variety of campus uh, every week for lunch or coffee. Um, so we want to kind of make sure that we're being accessible as well. Um, definitely. It's been a pleasure having you in our undergraduate meetings, definitely. Um, I want to continue this partnership. I want to add more faculty to attending Senate and even working with exec. I want to make sure that not only the president, us presidents and vice presidents are accessible, but also the administration is accessible at any time to help students out when we can. not As the Interim Security Council president and as Delta Phi president, I'm used to working one-on-one -on -one with an advisor, whether it was with Ann or Joe Wheelis from Greek Life or our national advisor for Delta Phi. I'm used to working one-on-one -on -one with an advisor and I'd love to continue that relationship. And additionally, in these roles, and also as the Secretary of College Policy, I've developed relationships with administrators from across campus, whether it be the President's Office, Community Outreach, Student Development Office, uh, and I really have good dialogue and good relationships with administrators. And a lot of my platform revolves on the fact that we have to continue to use these relationships to, to achieve goals that the students are bringing to the, to the administration. So when I walk in the room, I don't have to worry about spending the first week building that relationship. Instead, I can start from where we are and make these goals tangible in a shorter amount of time. This next question is from Christian Sassano. Oh, uh, Asana, Asana. Asana. <laughs> oh, okay. And Carlton, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, I hope I'm not getting too personal here, but just as a way to get you, get to know you guys better, I'm really curious what you look for in a romantic partner. 
steps to plan what they can do in five years and where they're going to be, that's amazing. That's what I look for. I, uh, I too got to speak about a beautiful girl in my life, Caitlin. Uh, and some of, the, some of the things she's taught me is that above all else, I love a girl who's intelligent and who's compassionate. A girl who can, who can stand by you and have great conversation and really expand your horizons. And also a girl who shows that she's compassionate, not towards just what you're trying to do, but what other people are trying to do. Uh, Caitlin has definitely broadened my horizons and made sure I'm always thinking about other people and not just what, what people closest to me need. And I really appreciate that in a girlfriend, especially since at times she seems to be on better half. Continuing the trend, my girlfriend is also here. <laughs> <laughs> she gets bright red whenever any attention is on her, so I can see it here even though there's lights on. I'm sorry. Um, Holly has taught me a lot of things, and I think when I look for a romantic partner, it's someone who supports me and dares me to be better than I could ever imagine. And that's what she does every day. I don't think I could get through any of this process without her, and I'm indebted to her. And that's really weirdly personal because I like my private life to be a little bit more private than this. But, um, you know, I really believe that the, those of us who are around us are those of us who really count on us to be better than who we are. And so she wants me to be the most someone with integrity and someone with compassion, uh, and she does that by being that herself. So, thank you. Our next question, we'll start with Trevor, and it's from Tony Hannigan. <laughs> Hello, candidates. How would you increase participation in William & Mary's college-wide committees? a short bio of each college campus committee to draw in interest for people to apply to that, that'd be great too. And also just utilizing, having the current college committee board come and speak at these info sessions would be a great step too. The next question will come from Mel. <laughs> I'll start with you. 
If you could increase funding to just one program, which program would you choose and why? I'm sorry? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you could increase funding to just one program, which program would you choose and why? Um, I think what I would really like to do is actually increase uh, funding for uh, STI testing and also for flu shots. I think those are really great things. And I think right now the budget doesn't make sense. And if we could, if it was a perfect world, I think these are great services that we actually can provide to students on a day to day basis. So by actually fully subsidizing STI testing, but also working with students to say, hey, like, how do you, are you living your, health, your life in a healthy manner and making sure that they're using the STI testing in a, in a way possible? So that's something I would do. Um, I definitely would like to funnel, or I'd send more money to the mental health organization, the College Counseling Center, definitely. That way we can grow, we can have speakers come to the college. That way they can educate students on mental health issues and mental health solutions that are happening in the world around us. I want to also use this money to publicize the services of the counseling center because right now not a lot of people know about it or know where to even find it. By the way, it's in blow, actually. <laughs> um, so I want to use that money to increase the presence of the counseling center on this campus. I would increase funding to mental health. Uh, if you think about it, there are subsidies now in order to get um, transportation to visits off campus. But if you need a subsidy in order just to get off campus to do counseling services, these, are, these appointments are very expensive. And you need subsidies also to actually attend the counseling services themselves. I believe that subsidies would go a long way in making sure that students feel like they can get off campus and they can get the help they need. This is a very stressful school. We all try and be perfectionists. We all try and get involved in as many things as possible. And we all get spread thin. If students felt like that, not only could they get off campus, but they could have help actually attending these services that would help them, we would overall improve the mental health care.
apply for these positions because these applications do work. I'm um, actually the kind of strength, the train of public affairs secretaries for the last three years all started with one application uh, four years ago. So um, it really is a really great resource for an administration to use to broaden the base of people that they actually uh, they actually choose from. This next question comes from a viewer who wishes to remain anonymous. Um, Trevor, you will start. If you were a kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? <laughs> uh, I would be uh, an egg yolk strainer. I have one where you, you pour the egg yolk into a cup and the, the yolk comes out of the, the cup's nose, actually, the person's face. So it's a nose egg yolk strainer. Do you ever have a why?
audience question before your closing statements, and it goes to Joseph Langley and Carlton Ulster. All right, uh, so my name is Joe. Uh, please explain the various apps, or the apps that various candidates have mentioned. And also, uh, if you could talk about Bitcoin. I mean, I want to pay my tuition in Bitcoin. I literally have nothing. All I have is Bitcoin. I have lost millions of dollars investing in Bitcoin. I have to eat dog food to survive. Can you please help me? <laughs> Carlton, you will start. Okay. <laughs> um, what was the first part of that question? Uh, <laughs> apps or Android apps? <laughs> well, that's a surprise to me. I don't have any apps. I just have a BuzzFeed article. Um, <laughs> but I, I'll learn how to make an app. Sure, definitely. Um, my knowledge of Bitcoin goes as far as this. There's a thing called Dogecoins, and that's about all I know. Um, Bitcoins, I'm not too familiar with, so I'll turn it over to the other two candidates also. <laughs> The big idea we have is Twop Start, which isn't actually an app, it's actually a portal to connect people, here, students, and innovative ideas for the greater Williamsburg community and the resources that exist out there. Right now, there are all kinds of students, and if you think about it, there have been entrepreneurs in the student body who have tried to build products, and all of them express the need to have a mentor or proper resources in order to really make that happen. I spoke to one student who said that while he was trying to develop uh, a web-based design, he was reached out to by an alumni who just happened to realize that they had similar interests over Facebook. His name was Charlie, and he really changed the student's perspective, gave him all kinds of resources, gave him lifelong tools. And I think there are a hundred more Charlies. The idea of Twomp Start is to connect students with people in Williamsburg who have the resources, the know-how, and the experience to help students chase their dreams. And uh, in relation to Bitcoin, uh, sorry, it's a very fluctuating market, but uh, it, can, it continues to rise, so I hope that your fortunes get better. <laughs> So what our app basically is, it's kind of one of our innovate uh, kind of ideas. It basically combines student happenings, uh, diversity listserv, amp events, uh, community engagement, all into one place, athletic events. So you can go through and look at each tab and say, hey, this week I'm really interested in a community service event. And you can log in with Facebook and actually click to the uh, different link uh, that, that is provided. And you can actually say you're liking or attending. So you'll be able to get a little bit more information. You'll also be able to filter. So you can say, like, I'm only interested in events from this uh, this type of organization or, or whatnot. As far as Bitcoin, I, I have to say I'm, I'm not as well versed in that area and I wouldn't go about trying to talk about it. So. <laughs> Thank you, candidates. We are going to begin with your closing statements and we're going to begin with Trevor. You have one minute. I want to start out by thanking everyone. My running mate, Liz, our supporters who believe in our ideas, Andy William and Mary. In my three years here, I've had access to resources and leadership opportunities that I would have never had in another school. The William Mary Student Assembly is here for one purpose, to represent the student body. I'm running for president because I want to make the essay more responsive to students. My platform focuses on student issues like the meal plan, health, and diversity, as well as making the essay transparent and inclusive. I believe that the essay is most effective when its leaders are attentive to student needs. As president, I will listen to you. We pride ourselves on being a connected community. The essay has put forth important policies, but too many students are falling through the cracks. I want to make sure that every student has the resources that they need to succeed. I have broad and fresh ideas that will benefit every person on campus. I want to create policy packages that benefit the most students. I'm not running for myself. I'm running to improve essay services through listening to you. If we elect leaders that understand the needs of students and listen to those concerns, together we will reach higher than before. Essay experience and tangible goals that we know that we can actually achieve. 
you know, it's fun just to go out there and talk about the things we want to do, and I, I would love to go out and do a lot of things on this campus. But Kendall and I really looked at this realistically and said, what can we actually go out and achieve? What can we actually go out and change? We love this campus, and so do the other candidates. But we actually want to make a positive impact every single day by going out, working with administrators, building on those personal relationships, and reaching out to student orgs that aren't always reached out to. Thursday is an important day. Typically, students don't tend to vote in elections. So what I want to charge each and every one of you to do is step back from the gimmicks. Step back from the friendships and look at each of the campaign's pages. Decide for yourself by looking at each of the platforms which will actually benefit all the students and which you can see yourself getting behind in the future and then make an informed decision come Thursday and vote. We are fighting for change one step at a time, and we mean that. We are fighting for each and every one of the 8,000 people on this campus. We will stop at nothing to make sure our policies that are not only realistic and feasible, but beneficial are achieved. Thank you, and uh, have a rest of your day. Thank you to all candidates. Give them a round of applause, please. So on behalf of the Lectures Commission, we'd like to thank you all very much for attending this very successful debate. Once again, thank you to the candidates, and please make sure you vote on Thursday.